All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. We're back for another Discord news update, taking a look at the latest that followed in and around the Discord birthday celebration. So Discord just had their birthday celebration. They've been knocking around since 2015, and they have decided that with all this talk about expansion and about maybe getting bought by Microsoft, but not really, that it was time to update their branding to kind of make it more approachable for a lot of different people and to just sort of clean up what they had originally designed when they first launched all those years ago. So we're still keeping the fun little controller logo. That is their primary concern from a lot of people. And they've trimmed down a lot of the details and actually made it symmetrical. This is actually something I just thought about, but I wasn't really 100% sure if I just had like a Wonko copy of their logo when I was making thumbnails. But apparently the original logo was a little bit cattywampus. And so they've gone through and made a bunch of different iterations of the logo until they kind of came up with something that they were mostly happy with, which was just kind of keep the overall shape of the controller remove some of the fine lines so that it's more clear and readable, and then just simplify the whole thing and make it symmetrical. Which, on the whole, sounds pretty simple to me. They also, I, you know, this is something that I, I was semi-aware of, but I never really thought was official, but apparently the logo has had a name since the very beginning. They actually called this logo Clyde, and then he lived inside of the little chat bubble, which was considered his house. So I think they, they're kind of keeping the chat bubble in a couple of different places, but for the most part, Clyde is wild and free, wandering the world, and being a cute little emotive face that has a number of different expressions that you can see here in this picture, so that he can tell you exactly what he thinks about you. So I think that's kind of neat. Uh, they've also gone through and made their own font now. Instead of just editing an existing font, they've modified one completely. They have a custom version of one now. It will be their new logo. I don't mind it. I mean, it, I kind of would have preferred something a little bit cleaner. It doesn't have so much uh, fine points at different areas, but it has the sort of personality and like the wobbliness that I expect from Discord. So on the whole, I probably won't notice it that much over time. It's just kind of something that happens when you change logo branding. You're always kind of picky about it, no matter who you are. But I think it looks fine. And then the one thing I actually did like was they made their colors a lot more vibrant. Their primary color, the blue-purple, is now officially blurple. And then they've got greens and yellows and fuchsia, red, white, and black. So the whole thing should be clearer, brighter, and easier for people to read and understand their visual logo branding, which is primarily their intent. They're also making a lot of their fun little cartoons more three-dimensional. Almost, I'd almost call it like that uh, World of Gumball art style, where they've got like cartoons mixed in with real life imagery kind of blended together is what they're going for. So it makes sense, and I think it's a strong branding redesign concept. I've already seen that a lot of people aren't the biggest fans of it, but I mean, it's at the end of the day, 90% of what you do in Discord is literally just going to be hanging out and talking to people, and you're not even going to notice the shape of the logo moving forward. So this should start rolling out to everybody's user interface soon. I think mine's already got it down in my taskbar. So look for, look for that, it should be interesting. And of course, like all of these news segments, I'm gonna put this info in the video description so you can click on each one of these articles and read them in their entirety for yourselves. The next thing is Discord is kind of shifting their focus, not entirely away from new features because they're adding new ways of doing text chats that you can follow like really long, complex threaded discussions as opposed to just having like a big drunken chronological mess in different channels. So it'll be interesting to see how they implement that. But the other thing is they're kind of focusing a lot on the community and making the servers more discoverable if you want to have a public server that caters to a very specific community for like book clubs or whatever. And as a part of that, they're actually opening up 
Discord Moderator Academy exams, which if you score well enough, will allow you access to their Discord Moderator servers where you can interact with other people, get advice on how to deal with users who are breaking the rules, who are, you know, making life difficult for other people, and possibly ways to report nasty content that you don't want to see on the platform. You know, things like child abuse, harassment, threats of violence, those sorts of things, you clearly want to report that. And right now, their current reporting methods are kind of wonky at best. So as a part of that, you can understand the best practices for moderation. You can read through some articles to see what the expectations are to moderate on Discord. You can kind of juxtapose that with your local rule sets on whatever Discord that you're a part of. You can take the exam, and then if you're either above 18, you go to the regular server with everybody, or if you're under 18, there's actually an under 18 server for Discord moderators, because Discord understands they have a lot of people who are underaged on the platform who work here, they, they moderate their servers with their friends, so it's important to include them. We would never want to exclude anybody who needs help, because, you know, I'm, I make tutorials, I don't care who watches them, what age you are, what gender, what place you live. So it's good to see that they're opening that up to everybody. But they are also aware that adult content is a thing and they gotta be careful who views and talks about what, where, and why. So if you're interested in that, you can take their exam. I might pop in to see what that is like here in the not too distant future. And then you can interact with other people who are, you know, cool approved Discord moderators and all that jazz. And I bet you get a little badge for your profile. So that'd be kind of cool. And then the last thing is Discord is looking at making Discord more available for different types of content than people want. They're trying to open it up. Like I was saying before, you know, in the branding, they're making the colors brighter and easier to understand and to see. The art is becoming more three-dimensional, kind of merging real life with the digital space. And then down here at the bottom, they've talked about how the fact that they've rolled out new stage channels, which makes it easy to do like a live podcast where people can interact with you. And going along with stage channels, they want to make it possible for people to like provide tickets to like digital events on the platform. You can either like give them out for free or you can have people pay for them. And I'm guessing that's part of how Discord wants to monetize the platform by allowing you to monetize stuff that you do. And then from there, taking a cut of the money, kind of like a uh, like a reverse Patreon meets StubHub or something like that. So they want to make it so that it's possible to, you know, get a ticket for like a stage event where you put on a performance and probably some other event type stuff where you do digital like conferences and expos. And then they're also making it possible to follow complex discussion threads on Discord. Because right now it's literally just a big chronological mess. So if you're kind of missed out on the conversation, you're probably not going to have the full context of what was going on. And so they're trying to fix that by providing threads almost like a forum where you can go through and kind of see the stream of thought as it kind of happened. And they're also understanding that this is a place that's not just about features, it's about building communities, making them easier to find, and making it easier to advertise your community to the greater Discord community so that you can bring people in. So on that effort, they're trying to expand how inclusive it is with new features, and also provide you with things like the Moderator Academy so they can make this place a nicer place to be. How that'll pan out, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But that's the plan, the air quotes plan. And so we'll see how that goes. So that'll be it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. This has been the quick little Discord updated news. Uh, I hope you found this interesting and kind of cool to see where Discord's going as a platform. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. The links for all these articles are, as usual, in the video description. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.